presented by Vessi. guys, how are you all doing? Really? That's just great. You know, I'm doing pretty great today too. If you're new here, welcome. My name is Crazy Ken, and today we're going to pit the iPhone 11 Pro versus the new iPhone 12 Pro. Specifically, we're going to be comparing the camera systems and see how much more you get out of this upgrade. And we're also going to dive into some of the semi-technical details about HDR and Apple's implementation of Dolby Vision. Now you may be wondering, well, where's the iPhone 12 Pro? Well, to shake things up a little bit, I'm actually filming this part of the episode with the iPhone 12 Pro right now. Let's go shoot some stuff. So the iPhone 12 Pro has been a freaking delight to use. These photos look stunning. We'll take a detailed look at the pics first before we dive into the video shots. So let's start with LiDAR. So the iPhone can measure depth and map out space by projecting tiny dots of light invisible to the naked eye, and the LiDAR scanner measures how long it takes the light to be received by the scanner, and this enables the camera to do a few things. For example, you can use portrait mode and night mode together at the same time. If you try to use portrait mode in low light on the iPhone 11 Pro, the photo can look noisier. Without the computational benefits of night mode, the camera usually has to rely on a higher ISO, which will increase the sensitivity to light, brightening the image a bit, but noise will also be more present. In the iPhone 12 Pro photo, there is much less noise, and the portrait mode depth of field is still present. Here's another portrait mode comparison in daylight. Notice how the subject's face is all in focus on the 12 Pro shot, but in the 11 Pro, the blur affects his stash and sunglasses. Apple claims that new machine learning helps separate the subjects from the background, and I believe the LiDAR scanner helps make that a bit possible too. I'm not 100% sure, but all I can say is the subject separation from the background looks a lot more accurate on the 12 Pro compared to the 11 Pro. LiDAR also helps with autofocus speed. In this pic, the focus is detected and maintained super quickly on the 12 Pro. However, on the 11 Pro, it's almost the same speed, but it has to readjust a few times. Because there's no LiDAR scanner on the 11 Pro, it's more difficult for the camera to detect a subject, especially in low light. So let's talk about the faster aperture. On the wide lens on the iPhone 12 Pro, you have an f1.6 aperture compared to an f1.8 aperture on the 11 Pro. A benefit to this is more light can now get through to the sensor. Here's two photos, and you can see the 12 Pro was able to pick up significantly more light at a lower ISO, so the noise is also less present than on the 11 Pro pick. Here's another example to show more light hitting the sensor. Honestly, both of these are acceptable for an iPhone pick, but it's just to give you some contrast. And a side note, if you want to learn more about how apertures and ISO speeds work, I explain those topics a little bit in my first gen iPhone versus 11 Pro camera episode, so check that out too. Now let's take a look at Smart HDR3 versus Smart HDR2. Honestly, I didn't notice a ton of difference between the two phones, but I have seen some highlights and some brightness in clouds and trees get preserved a little bit better. Nothing really to write home about, but if you noticed any more differences that I didn't see, feel free to share those things in the comments. Okay, so I'm not really one for selfies, honestly, but since we now have deep fusion in the front facing camera, I think one sample photo is in order. So deep fusion is a newer version of Apple's AI, which has been around since the 11 release. And what it can do is it can help sharpen details and reduce noise and a bunch of other things. So let's take a look at how it works on the front camera. In this shot, my eyes and eyebrows look a little bit sharper and there's less noise in the shadow under my hat compared to the 11 Pro photo. All right, I'm glad I got that selfie out of the way. That's good. But actually, I discovered something that also makes me look way worse. Yeah, an ultra wide shot with low perspective. <laughs> PSA, don't do that. So the iPhone's photo camera is getting better every year. It's just crazy how you can have all of these features and this technology in your pocket on a device you use every day. I mean, it's cliche, but in the end, the best camera is the one you have with you. And before we jump into the awesome video capabilities of the iPhone 12 Pro, I wanna talk about something else that I use every day. Shoes. You saw them in the earlier shots. These are super comfy and waterproof shoes from Vessi. 
I wanted to upgrade my look a little bit because I've been wearing the same type of shoes for longer than I can remember, and I wanted to go with a minimal white style. And I found Vessi at the perfect time. They look great, but they're also super comfortable and breathable, keeping you cool in the summer and warm in the winter. I was walking around all day while shooting with the new iPhone, and I felt no discomfort whatsoever. And like I said earlier, they are 100% waterproof. Not a drop of water was inside after the whole day. So these will be great for those upcoming rainy and snowy months. And of course, they're gonna get dirty when you go out in the woods, but no worries, they're machine washable too. So if you or someone you know wears shoes, click the link in the description and use my code to get $25 off your pair of Vessi shoes. And if you try them out and they're the wrong size and you need to swap them out, don't worry about that they'll replace them for free. And when you order your new pair of Vessi shoes with the link in the description, you'll also be supporting the Computer Clan channel. So thank you very much. And thank you Vessi for partnering with us. So now let's talk about the video capabilities. And this is where some things can get really cool, but also a little bit complicated when we try to break these things down. But it's complicated in a cool way. So a big new feature in the iPhone 12 and the iPhone 12 Pro is the ability to shoot 10-bit HDR with Dolby Vision. Unfortunately, I can't show you exactly how beautiful these HDR video clips are gonna look because the way this stream is encoded through the YouTubes or wherever you're watching me is not in a color space that will allow for all the brightness to show through. But even if it was allowing that, if you're not watching me on an HDR display of any kind, you're not gonna be able to see the brightness anyway. But in case you do have access to an HDR display, TV, phone, whatever, I do have links in the description that have the files directly from the phone and you can download them and take a look at what they look like. But for all intents and purposes, I will simulate the difference between SDR and HDR just so you can get an idea as to how drastic the different brightnesses can be while we're still inside of this restricted color space. So let's take a look. So here we have the iPhone 11 Pro footage and the iPhone 12 Pro footage. Right now they look the same, but that's because I had to color correct the iPhone 12 Pro's HDR footage to fit within the color space you're watching me on which is called Rec. 709. And it's limited to 100 nits of brightness. If I disable the correction, highlights would clip and you would lose a lot of detail. This is why you can only truly experience the footage on an HDR display. But when you do, you'll see how much better the highlights in the clouds are preserved. Here's another example of me in the layer. Let's say I didn't apply those corrections and I just tried to squeeze HDR into Rec. 709. Well, this is what it would look like. As you can see, it looks freaking horrible. And that's just because Rec. 709 is small like this and wide color gamut, high dynamic range is much bigger. And all of this beautiful luminance data and information, well, Rec. 709 just simply can't understand that. So that's why if you're going to standard dynamic range but you're shooting in HDR, you need to do corrections so you look normal. It was interesting to watch HDR footage in the dark on the iPhone because that's when you can really tell how bright this footage is compared to SDR video. Now let's say I applied the same corrections from the HDR clip onto the standard dynamic range clip. Now you can see how much more brightness the HDR clip can capture, at least within the simulated environment. Now let's compare this footage to my daily driver, the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera 6K. I've color graded the clip to look similar to the iPhone 12 Pro's simulated footage and the big difference is in the fine details, like in the leaves here. But hey, it's a small sensor and it fits in your freaking pocket, so we can cut it a break. Another advantage that the 12 and the 12 Pro have over the previous phones is they can record in 10-bit color. And 10-bit color allows you to capture four times as many luminance values per color channel. And when you multiply all that together, you'll get a lot more color. And basically that allows HDR enough wiggle room to make the pretty pictures you wanna see with those nice highlights and those detailed shadows, etc. But 10-bit color also gives us more flexibility in post if we were to take this footage into an editing software or a color grading software and tweak it. So for example, if we were working with gradients, you would get some banding with 8-bit color because we're more limited with how many stops of color we have. But in 10-bit, everything can be a lot smoother because we have more color to work with. Also for fun, I exaggerated the color grading on these two clips just to show the detail preservation. And you can see a significant amount of macro blocking on the iPhone 11 Pro footage compared to the 12 Pro. I suspect the 10-bit color helps the 12 Pro preserve detail better but there also might be other computational benefits that the 12 Pro offers that I'm not fully aware of. But at the end of the day, you can see a big difference and the 12 Pro captures more luminance values per channel than the 11 Pro can 
while still maintaining a very similar file size. I plan to cover HDR a lot more in a future episode, so stay tuned for that. And even though it's exciting to have this in a phone, in a freaking phone, keep in mind it can't be adopted everywhere just yet. It's gonna need some time to mature. So you can shoot this cool stuff and everything and that's great, but not everyone's gonna be able to see it. Again, if they don't have an HDR capable display or TV, phone, whatever, they're not gonna be able to see your beautiful HDR footage. Also, it depends on the platform you upload to. For example, Twitter. As of right now, when I upload HDR footage to Twitter directly from my phone, I can't view it that way even on my HDR display on this phone. Yes, the footage will upload, but it's gonna be conformed down to standard dynamic range, which still looks good, but you're not gonna get all the benefits of HDR until the app and the website and all the other developee stuff that has to go with it understands what the HDR footage is. So you have to think about compatibility. Not everything will adopt it yet, but we'll get there. It just needs some time. Plus another thing is if you shoot the HDR footage on here and you wanna edit that stuff in software like Adobe Premiere or Final Cut Pro, well, you'll need to have the equipment and the skills to do that. And if you're not willing to do that or you can't afford the equipment or whatever, well, then you gotta be aware of like, what do you wanna do? Do you wanna shoot HDR or not? So there is an option in the settings. If you wanna turn the HDR off, you can do that. And then it will just record traditional standard dynamic range. I also turned off the auto FPS feature because I don't like my frame rates changing while I'm shooting. Even though it was set to only auto adjust at 30 frames per second, for some reason, even though I was shooting at 60 frames a second, my frame rates were still varying. And I noticed this when I was trying to slow down the clip in post. I don't know if I did something wrong or if it was a glitch because me being more of a power user, I don't like a lot of automatic stuff happening. I'm just gonna turn that off in the settings here, but you can do whatever you'd like. So that addresses the HDR and the 10-bit capabilities of the iPhone 12 Pro. But what about this Dolby Vision thing? Well, in a way, you already witnessed it. Again, we're in a more limited color space, but you were already seeing it in action. Dolby Vision coloring and instructions are automatically applied to the video as the camera shoots in real time. In short, Dolby Vision is a mastering and delivery format that is used to fine tune footage. In bigger productions, the final product you see on the big screen looks nothing like how it does on the camera. It has to go through several steps of processing, including coloring, and then later in the process, in this case, fine tuning and mastering for a much better HDR experience. I won't go down the rabbit hole as to why we need to color footage, but in short, the way a sensor converts photons into voltage linearly is not practical. It doesn't recreate a picture the way our eyes see it. So camera companies and other smart people created log or logarithmic color profiles, which use a logarithmic curve to represent the light in a picture better. But to really make it look great, the highlights, shadows, midtones, colors, etc., need to be adjusted after acquisition. This is why we do color grading in post-production to really make the image pop. And Dolby Vision is a growing standard which can make that happen. Now, coloring in Dolby Vision is a process that is usually done by professionals with specialized equipment. But now the iPhone 12 and 12 Pro can perform those coloring processes for you automatically. Powered by the A14 Bionic, the iPhone 12 analyzes every single frame of your footage and intelligently applies the appropriate color grade to make your shots look great in HDR. I have a link in the description from the Dolby Institute, which breaks down Dolby Vision in much greater detail. So I recommend giving that a look if you're curious about more of the technical side. So in a way, Dolby Vision is kind of like dynamic, high dynamic range. Because with typical high dynamic range, like the HDR10 standard, that's more broad. And there's like a constant set of instructions that establish how the whole movie file should look. But with Dolby Vision, you can provide additional instructions that adjust the picture as the video is playing. So the color and the dynamic range and everything looks perfect from scene to scene as the motion picture plays. So it's more dynamic as opposed to other HDR standards which are more broad. So the iPhone 12 Pro camera system is pretty freaking awesome. It's definitely a step up from the 11 Pro. And hey, if you shot any cool videos and photos, feel free to share that stuff with me. Ideally on Twitter, I check my Twitter a lot, so go ahead and send that stuff there. I'd love to see it. And don't forget, once the Pro Max comes out, which has even more camera features, I will cover that in a future episode. Also, if you wanna help fund the future of the Computer Clan, plus get some awesome perks along the way, feel free to pledge to our Patreon. And if you can't pledge right now, but you still wanna support the channel, that's cool too. Another way you can help us out is share this episode with your friends or on your social media. Thanks in advance for your support.
And if you like this episode, you know what to do. Thanks for sticking with me. Catch the crazy and pass it on. Thank you.